In this video, I will show you how a real-time kernel performs in comparison to a generic kernel. Using Ubuntu Pro, we get a real-time kernel out of the box and this is the one that we will use in this video. And since Ubuntu Pro is free to use for up to 5 machines, you also get the real-time kernel for free. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. Real-time is all about being deterministic and that's the key feature of every real-time system. That means that if a task or process is scheduled to run at a certain time or at a certain period, it should run at that time. So this means that we can always predict when the process will run and that's exactly what the real-time kernel is trying to do, it's trying to be deterministic. This is not the case with the generic kernel because the generic kernel is trying to execute all processes more or less fairly. So this means that we don't really know when our process is going to start or when it's gonna end, so we don't have a deterministic system. But is a real-time kernel faster than a generic kernel? It really depends on your use case. Again, real-time is not about being fast, it's about being deterministic. For instance, if you want to play games on a real-time kernel, then you will be disappointed because a game is not a real-time application. For a game it doesn't really matter if you lose a frame or two or maybe 10 frames, well the frame rate will drop and maybe you will be a bit frustrated, but the game itself will run anyways, no matter how you feel about it, it will not be affected. On the other hand, if a real-time application misses a period, it can break the application, or even worse, it can damage the hardware that depends on the real-time application. Unless the game is designed to be a real-time application, it will probably perform equally on a real-time kernel or maybe worse than on a generic kernel. The thing is, you can always be faster with better hardware, no matter which kernel you use, but better hardware doesn't mean that the system will be deterministic. If you want to run a real-time application that needs to be deterministic, then you need to run it on a real-time platform, and that's exactly what a real-time kernel is. So for this video, I prepared a real-time application that we will run on a generic kernel and also on the real-time kernel and compare the results. Without further ado, let's jump to the terminal. I will dock this one here and this one here. If you are interested how to snap windows like this, I made a video about it and you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. I will make this one a bit bigger. First let's check the kernel. So right now I'm running the real-time kernel from Ubuntu Pro. Let's check the Pro status. Here you can see as well, the real-time kernel is enabled. If you are interested how to activate Ubuntu Pro and how to enable the real-time kernel for free, I made a video about it and you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. The real-time application that I have prepared is called the real-time tester. So let's run this one as sudo. This is the application, real-time tester. It is a simple application that is scheduled to run every millisecond. And every time the scheduler runs the application, it measures the delay how long it actually took to start it. And it also measures how long the task is actually running. As you can see, the delay is way below the period and the task takes very little to execute, so the application has no problem running every millisecond. Now let's stop this one. And let's try to start it again. Now let's set the period to 0 0.07 milliseconds. Now this time, as you can see, the scheduler from time to time misses a full period. So in a game, this would be like missing a frame. As you can see here, the scheduler has a hard time to keep up with this 0.07 milliseconds period. Let's stop that. As I said, in a real-time application, you actually don't want this to happen, no matter how the load is on the operating system, on the scheduler. So it looks like that 70 microseconds are the limit for my machine with the real-time kernel without any load actually. Now let's try the same thing on the generic kernel and let's see how that one performs. I am now on the same machine running the generic kernel. Let's check which one this is. So it is 5.19 generic. Let's try out the real-time application. Again we have a period of 1 millisecond and it looks like that the scheduler has a problem running it. So the scheduler actually missed the 1 millisecond period here. We can also see the delay is much higher than on the real-time kernel. So this actually tells us that we can't even trust the generic kernel to hit the 1 millisecond period every time. And this is without any real load on the machine. 
let's stop this one and now let's try with 0.07 millisecond period now this one as you can see has a real problem keeping up it's definitely too much for the scheduler whoa let's stop that now this was a test with barely any load on the machine and we can already tell that we cannot trust the generic kernel with a real-time application. Now let's try to run the real-time application in the background and at the same time run something really heavy on the machine, like a real game for instance, and let's see if the application can keep up. This time we will run the first test on the generic kernel and then we will switch to the real-time kernel. I will start the game pin the terminal at the top of the screen so you can always see how the real-time application performs. So let's see. <laughs> you weren't around here when I was a kid. <laughs> you weren't around here when I was a kid. The game I was playing is called Fist, Forged in Shadow Torch, and I also made a Windows vs Linux gameplay comparison playing the same game. The results are very interesting, so if you want to see the gameplay, the link to the video is up there or down in the description. In this second test with load, I started the real-time tester with a period of 0.3 milliseconds. And as you saw, the generic kernel had a hard time keeping up with the period, so a lot of periods were missed. On the other hand, the real-time kernel did not miss a single one, it had no problem running it, so the real-time kernel did the job really well. In the next video, I will show you how this real-time application works under the hood, so if you are interested, you should find the video somewhere up here. 
And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.